Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkroom Duels, and today I'm going to be doing a Witchcrafter deck profile. So I'm really excited to do this one because this one's definitely in my top 10 favorites of all time because Witchcrafter Golem Aruru kind of reminds me of El Shadow Construct, and El Shadow Construct is one of my favorite extra deck monsters of all time. I really think that the, they did awesome with her artwork, and I'm glad she was a secret rare because they actually did a good job with the artwork and the secret rare foiling. So I'm really excited to show you guys this one. This was one of the decks that I actually bought like three boxes of the box that it, all of them came out of, and I pulled all everything I needed for him. This was the first deck that I ever bought everything that I needed out of boxes and pulled everything. And that's why it's one of my favorite decks is because I actually pulled the stuff out of packs. So anyways, guys, let's get straight on this. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell next and come part of notification squad. Definitely check out our Ko-Fi down in the description. It should be the first link. If you guys want to become donors of the channel, I really would appreciate it. So let's get straight on into this one, guys. So, first off, we're going to be playing two copies of Witchcrafter Golem Aruru. Uh, Witchcrafter Golem Aruru is an awesome, awesome, awesome card. Basically, her effect is that when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a spellcaster type monster or targets any spellcaster type monster you control with an attack, you can special t summon, you can target one card your opponent controls or Witchcrafter, or target one card. Your, yeah, your opponent controls, or a Witchcrafter spell card in your graveyard, special summon this card, and if you do, return that target card to the hand, and you can only use your effect once per turn, but you just instantly special summon this 2800 body that's like, hey, what's up? How you doing? Um, and that's a really awesome ability to be able to do, to just instantly special summon her, and be able to go off into that play of having a 2800 body. And then we play one copy of Madame Veer. Madame Veer is still just a good one of. I probably would never play her at more than one. But during your during damage calculation, if a spellcaster monster battles an opponent's monster, you can reveal any number of spell cards in your hand uh, with different names. And then if you do, the battling monster gains a thousand attack and defense. Uh, for each card revealed until the end phase of the turn, and then you can discard a spell to negate the activation of all face up monsters your opponent currently controls until the end phase of the turn, which is just crazy cool. And she's searchable, so why not? Then I played two copies of Witchcrafter, uh, Hain. Um, Hain is really good because your opponent cannot target it with card other, or your opponent cannot target other spellcaster type monsters you control with card effects, and then you can discard a card, discard a spell, then target a face up card your opponent controls and destroy it. Plus, she's a 2400 body that you can just swing at your opponent over and over again. And it's just super, super good. Um, weird thing, she actually has Monarch stats, which is just weird to me. Um, but she's level 7. So, you kind of do have to finagle around to get her out. But it's not really hard, because a lot of your Witchcrafters, you just have to tribute a card, tribute this card, and then discard a spell and special summon a Witchcrafter monster in your deck. A lot of them share that ability, like the Witchcrafter Fire. Um, during your main phase, all of Witchcrafters after this share the ability that during your main phase you can tribute this card and then special summon a Witchcraft and discard a spell and then special summon a Witchcrafter monster from your deck. So you just discard it, special summon Madame Veer, special summon Hain, whichever one you want. Usually those are the two you're going to special summon all the time. And then this one's particular ability is that you can banish it and then send a Witchcrafter card from your deck to the graveyard, which a lot of your Witchcrafter spells just return back to your hand during the end phase, which is really cool to be able to reuse them. So it kind of sends them and then searches them, but it kind of slows it down so you don't just instantly get spells in your hand and just start going off. Um, then we play three copies of Witchcrafter Poterine. Pottery? I don't know. I think it's pottery. Uh, it's like pottery, but pottery. Um, during your main phase, you can tribute it and then discard a spell, special summon a witchcraft from your deck. And then it also has the effect of that you can banish it from your graveyard, draw a card, then you can send a witchcrafter card from your hand to the graveyard. Or um, if you don't have if you don't have any, you banish your entire hand. So you have to make sure that you have something in your hand to send. Then we play three copies of Potterine which is interesting. Um, she has the same ability that you tribute her, discard a spell, special summon a witchcrafter, and then you have the ability, if you have no cards in your hand, you can banish this card from your grave, then target a witchcrafter card in your graveyard, and add it back to your hand, which can be really important to be able to get your witchcrafters back in your hand to get additional plays off. And these cards are so cute. I don't know why. Like, I love the eyes, how big they made her eyes. I think this is just really great. Um... Three copies of Ash Blossom just to be able to stop your opponent from doing things. And two copies of Effect Veiler because Effect Veiler is a good budget option to Infinite Impermanence. And I actually just play this instead. It's, a, it's just a good budget option to play instead of Impermanence. Um, but that's it for the uh, monsters. Let's get into the spells. And kind of like Spellbooks, this deck is going to be playing a lot of spells. So for the spells, we're going to be playing three copies of Call by the Grave to go ahead and get that out of the way. Call by the Grave is an important spell card in the deck to be able to 
prevent your opponent from doing all sorts of shenanigans with hand traps. One copy of Monster Reborn. You want the one copy of Monster Reborn just to be able to revive stuff. And definitely give us a like for that copy of LOB uh, Monster Reborn. We have the original print ones in this deck. One copy of Terraforming to get back to get our copies of Secret Village of the Spellcaster so our opponent can activate spells. One copy of Reasoning because they're all different levels except for Madame Veer and Uruu, which are both level 8. Two copies, or one copy of Witchcrafter Combination. Witchcrafter Combination lets you target a Witchcrafter monster you control and make a second attack during the battle phase. And then, and your opponent can activate spells or traps until the end phase of the damage step when it battles. And all the Witchcrafter spells share the ability that during the end phase, if you control a Witchcrafter monster while this card's in your grave, you can add it back to your hand, but you can only use the effect of Witchcrafter Combination once per turn and one each effect... Um, you can only use uh, one Witchcrafter combination effect per turn. So, like, if you activate it, you can't add it back the same turn, which kind of sucks. But, whatever. Um, but that's still really cool to be able to add them back. So, then we play one copy of Witchcrafter Draping. Draping is super, super cool. Um, you get to target spells and traps your opponent controls up to the number of Witchcrafter monsters you control and return those targets to the hand. So, it's kind of like Giant Trunade. Um, and the, during the end phase, it shares the ability that during the end phase, if you control a Witchcrafter monster while this card is in your grave, you can add this card um, back to your hand, which is pretty good. Um, and I really like that effect, but it's only during your end phase. So, like, if you activate it, and then the next turn, you have to, like, let it sit during the rest of that turn, and then the next turn, you can get it back. Um, then we play three copies of Witchcrafter Holiday. Witchcrafter Holiday is kind of like Monster Reborn. You get to target a Witchcrafter monster in your graveyard and special summon it. That's all it does, pretty much. And then you can add it back. Three copies of Witchcrafter Creation. Witchcrafter Creation lets you add a Witchcrafter monster back from your deck, uh, from your deck to your hand. So it's just the searcher of the deck. Uh, I play one copy of Scroll. I just play one copy of Scroll because its effect is, is the only qu continuous spell besides By Street. But um, this one does, once per turn, if you when a spellcaster monster destroys a monster by battle, you can draw a card, which is really good, but it's searchable, so you just need it as a one of. And then if a witchcrafter monster you control would discard to activate its effect, you can send it to the graveyard instead. And then during the end phase, it shares the ability, if a witchcrafter um, monster is on your field, you can place this card in your spell and trap card zone. So it instantly just comes back. And then I play two copies of By Street. Uh, By Street's really good because the first time a Witchcrafter monster you control would be destroyed uh, by a battle or by card effect is not destroyed. And then it has the ability, same ability that you can send it to the graveyard if you're going to activate. And it has the same thing about placing it back in the spell and trap card zone. And then I play three copies of Secret Village of the Spellcaster. Secret Village of the Spellcaster is super good because you're always going to have a spellcaster on field. Um, if you control a spellcaster type spellcaster, or you control a spellcaster type monster, not a spellcaster type spellcaster, that was just silly. If you control a spellcaster type monster, your opponent can't activate spells, but if you don't control a spellcaster type monster, you can't activate spells. But you play a lot of spellcasters in here, so all you have to do is normal summon once, and you get that spellcaster. And you can just go off from there, and your opponent cannot activate spells, which is really, really, really important um, to us. So that's it for the spells, guys. Let's get into the traps. I do play one trap in the entire deck, which I will show you. The only trap that I play is one copy of Witchcrafter Masterpiece, which is actually, if you look at the card artwork, is them summoning... Um, Witchcrafter Hain, which is just super, super, super cool. If you control a Witchcrafter monster, you can target a spell in either player's graveyard, add one spell with the same name from your deck to your hand, and then during either player's turn, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish it, and any number of spellcaster or spells from your grave, and then special summon a Witchcrafter monster from your deck, equal to the level, which is really good. And I think it's just a good one-of, because it's searchable, and it's a trap, so it's kind of slow, so I just played it as a one-of. So that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's get into the extra deck. So this is a deck that you can play without an extra deck, so I just kind of threw a bunch of, like, random cards in the extra deck that I think might work here. Um, I don't really play anything. I really want to play like a sub engine in the deck, like shed all or invoked that would go along with it. That are a spellcaster engine that would go with it. But I just didn't play it in here. I wanted a pure version for my favorite deck because I like the pure version a little bit better than the shed all version. And the, I know coming from me, the shed all version, I don't like it as much or the invoked engine, which you can play either or, but I just played a whole bunch of link monsters and one XYZ monster that you guys will see at the end. I know they're all different levels. What am I going to summon? So, 
You play Boral Sword in here. You can play Boral Sword. Topologic Zero Boros. Zero Boros is one that I think is actually pretty good in the deck because you can just banish everything on the field when something special comes to a zone. And you can trigger it pretty easily by using the Witchcrafter abilities to summon into a zone that he points to. Um, you can at normal summon or set monsters into the extra monster that this card points to, which you can special summon. Um, you can't summon, so never mind. It has to be your opponent to trigger it, which kind of sucks. But... Um, to an extra monster zone, this card points to. So I can summon it to the zones that, down here. So that that's pretty cool to be able to do. I never I've never summoned this card. Like I've never. I, this is the first time I've included it in deck profile outside the budget variant of Rocket. So I, I excuse me. You can special summon down here, and then it banishes everything. Um, Borload because Borload's good. Um, Mechanic Crusadia Avermax because it's really good. Topologic uh, Dragon. Topologic is really, really good in here because you just special summon it and then it just destroys everything. Like, that's awesome. Soryuja is extremely easy to pull off in here because you just special summon. This is one I actually do summon in this deck. You just summon Soryuja because you can have all different names in here. It's very rare that I actually don't go into Soryuja. Uh, Black Cluster Soldier, Soldier of Chaos. It's another option. You don't have to play this one if you don't want to. Topologic Trisbania. Trisbania is pretty good. You can also, if you have them, I didn't want to play them in here, but you can play Pot of Extravagance because this deck doesn't really focus on the extra deck at all. Uh, Nightmare Unicorn to bounce stuff, Phoenix to pop stuff, mo spells, and then Cerberus to pop um, monsters. These three I would definitely play if I was going to play something. Underclock Tager because it boosts attack. Crowley because you can make it pretty easily because it's it's just really easy to make. Alamirage because you can summon it by using uh, Poterine. I think it's Poterine that you can use it with. Yeah, because it has zero. And then you can actually use uh, Potterine. You can use both of these to summon out Alamirage because they're both a thousand or less. So that's just an option if you want to go that route. And then the uh, XYZ that I play is one copy of Hope Harboring Dragon Titanic Galaxy. Again, you can pick this deck up. It is kind of expensive for the main deck, but you can pick it up and not even touch the extra deck without putting Shadals or Invoked in it. Like, you can play it straight without the extra deck. You could carry this just this around and be okay. Um, but that's it for the deck, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this one. Um, I wanted to do this one because it's it's one of my favorite decks. Like, it really is. I love the artwork of it. I love the way that they made Aruru, and you can actually look at the card artworks and see how they, you know, experimented till the point that they created her. And she actually has, like, the different pieces from each one of them, which is really cool. So, anyways, guys, this is Dark Room Duels. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Definitely check out that Ko-Fi and hit that bell in there so you can come part of Notification Squad. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See you around, guys.